So there is an update to the DRM battle on Oculus that we reported last month. Joining us to talk about the newest developments in headset-specific DRM is Sam Moscovich from Ars Technica. Welcome, Sam. Hello, hello, everybody. How's it going? It's going well. So fill us in on the first few chapters of the cat and mouse battle. I know we talked about it, but maybe people weren't watching that episode. So, so just give us a little wrap, uh, you know, catch up. Sure, sure. So virtual reality is still in early days, but you can buy really nice sets for very expensive computers for your home. And the two main ones, the one people mostly know about is Oculus Rift. Facebook bought them for a lot of money, and that's the one where you sit down comfortably in a chair, put on a very comfortable headset, use a controller to pretend you're in uh, another world. Uh, and then there's the HTC Vive, which is a similar idea, but kicks it up a notch, lets you walk around a big room, and has these little uh, things that track you moving around so you don't bump into walls and hit your cat. Um, so they're similar but different. And people noticed uh, that you could buy games that uh, for the Oculus Rift using the HTC Vive's uh, storefront, which is Steam VR. But you couldn't do the other way around. You couldn't go through the Oculus Store and buy stuff that worked on the HTC Vive. Uh, some enterprising, uh, I wouldn't say hackers, but definitely fans and enthusiasts figured out that they're essentially both doing the same thing with headset data. So if you're in a virtual world in one, it's sort of just reading you where you move around in virtual space in the same way, did some redirecting and made it so that you could take Oculus games and run them on the Vive just with a little patch. It was incredibly easy to do. When that news broke, Oculus didn't have much to say. They said, we don't approve unauthorized hacks, but didn't go much further. And then they quietly went and removed the ability for this patch to work. They rem removed the ability for you as a Vive owner to play those Oculus games smoothly. It would say, oh, I'm sorry, you don't own the Oculus headset, and so we're going to consider that DRM. Well, users cried foul, and we at Ars Technica actually were at E3 recently and spoke to some executives, and they made it clear that they thought that this sort of patch done on a whole-scale, highly... Uh, public level to be downloaded by anybody. They thought that was too far, that you as an enterprising user could hack your own stuff for your own personal use, but being able to download like that, they said that ruined their ability to fund exciting new ventures. And that was sort of their explanation for why it was that they needed you to not only buy their software, but also buy their hardware to use their software. Um, they've turned tail on that. Now Oculus has come out uh, after the fact uh, they, they've confirmed what was just discovered as a quiet introduction. They quietly said, here, you can put that hack back in. The hack started working again. The man who made the hack, who still hasn't identified himself, he's still been this anonymous patching guy, uh, has come out and said, hey, it works. Go ahead and use it. And because of that, the, uh, the patch, it was known as Revive. It's still known as Revive. Uh, it had been using a DRM blocker. It had actually been going over Oculus's DRM. So essentially, it was kind of the first step to piracy. Well, Revive removed that because Revive's creators said they don't want piracy. They just want it where if you buy any headset that you can play any VR game. Um, so that cat and mouse has ended with Oculus coming out and saying, you know what, we're, we're not going to we're not going to remove that ability from Revive now. And we're not going to remove that from Revive in the future. So from here on out, if you own an HTC Vive, you can play Oculus games, and Oculus owners can still play some of these Vive games. They don't work quite as well because you need your hands for some of the Vive stuff, but it's the it's a really, in my opinion, a really good first step towards something like VR to have a little bit more traction. Um, I will say, I only at my uh, home office, I only have the HTC Vive, and it's really nice to be able to go to the Oculus storefront, pay perfectly good money to developers for their games, and play them on the headset of my choice. You know, that's that to me, I think, is, is a much smarter move that's going to keep more people paying both companies for VR and keep those VR people happy. Because, gosh, if you spend $600 to $800 for a headset and $800 to $1,200 for a compatible computer, the last thing you need is any more roadblocks. You're already kind of in. You're already kind of a freak. So don't <laughs> take that customer off. So the founder of Oculus, Palmer Lucky, um, he, you know, he was, has said several times that he, he wouldn't put DRM on it. He wanted a more open uh, landscape for VR. Uh, mm. Why do you think they changed? Or do you think that maybe this wasn't a decision that he made? Um, the first decision wasn't one that he made. What, why do you think they had the change of heart? I honestly think Oculus is concerned about keeping its system special. They, there's some corporate belief that you need our headset. You need to buy into our whole ecosystem. Please be Oculus, Oculus, Oculus. 
Um, and I know that they're trying to push this with their new hand controllers. So like the Vive, they're coming out with their own thing called Oculus Touch. It's coming out this fall. We don't know exactly when. Uh, and it's got a slightly different set of buttons, slightly different uh, functionality than the Vive's hand wands. And I think that's where you're going to see Oculus come out and say, well, we finally have something that will only work with our system. So if you don't buy ours, too bad. Um, so as of right now, they don't have that. The Vive is the Oculus Plus, as far as I'm concerned. The Vive gives you what the Oculus can do and a little more. And so it's sort of foolish for them to even try and trick anybody into thinking otherwise because the people who are paying this much are savvy. No one is throwing these thousands of bucks at virtual reality, at these things with all of these cables and all these restrictions and haven't done their homework. They know the differences between a GTX 970 and GTX 980 Ti for crying out loud. They're not about to be fooled by about some corporate speak about the current Oculus Rift headset doing something magical. It's a nicely made headset, but it's got its limits. Uh, once this touch controller comes out, I think we're going to have a lot more hands-on time to say, all right, which is better? Which can do certain things that the other can't? Right now, the Vive has the lead. Will Oculus take the lead after that? I don't know. But they need to put themselves in better graces for the people who are buying this stuff and who may soon buy this stuff. Because who knows how long this sort of closed eyes, bulky cord virtual reality industry is going to last. That may be done in a year and a half once things like the HoloLens, which leave your vision open but still offer this cool virtual reality system, uh, take over. So it, it's, it really behooves them to keep as many people in good graces as possible while this thing seems like it might make money because who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I was just going to say, I, I never know with VR whether to compare what we have right now to console gaming or to PC gaming because it requires a PC, but it really feels like the HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift, like they're, they're consoles. I mean, there's no analog uh, to this in the console world, right? Like you, you could never take a Sega Genesis game and pop it into a Super Nintendo and it would play. Absolutely, because it's more like a monitor. This is less yeah. like a whole Got system it. and more just like the screen. And that has been, uh, complaining users have made that really clear, saying that would be like an a Acer telling me that I couldn't use a BenQ monitor for a game. That's ridiculous. Got it, got and it. And these are currently monitors until they add the kind of things that consoles do, which are specific controllers and specific processors and this, like, you need this for this specific game. Uh, it's not going to fly. No one's going to buy it. So, And that that's what Oculus Touch... Once Oculus right. Touch is out, we really will get into the Sega Genesis Super Nintendo of they do things slightly differently. One has blast processing and all that kind of mumbo-jumbo. Mm -hmm. That will kick in. But until then... I love my Vive, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> well, so once the controller, the Oculus controllers come out, will you be able to walk around with Oculus or will... Because so right now, that's of... the difference, right? I mean, the Vive, you walk around, and the Oculus, you sit down and become a couch potato? That's the thing that we're not 100% sure on. Like, uh, Kyle and I uh, at Ars Technica were lucky to try out some new Oculus Touch stuff at this year's E3. Uh, there was one game called The Unspoken that was this battling game. We had to stand in one point. It was designed for us to not walk around, but we could use our hands and spin around with it and feel like we were magicians shooting fire and holding up shields. Um, and I think that's what we're going to get, is we're going to get these sorts of weird games where you can sort of stand in one spot which is a lot more convenient for your average gaming person. You, it's it's mm. really hard to devote an entire room to a thing where you clear out the, um, I'm looking over at my pit, my virtual reality pit. But not everybody's insane like me. Not everybody goes and puts felt pads under their couch and finds the perfect arrangement. Some people have kids and pets and lives. That's low on their list. So I think that there's going to be some limited stuff where you can turn all the way around and well, you'll do these sort of button tricks to warp around. Like I'll look over in the distance, oh, and I warp, and it feels like I've moved around a giant room. I still feel transported. I can do these cool virtual reality things without necessarily walking halfway the cr across the room. I think that's going to become the norm. That's going to become an accepted thing. Even in, like, augmented reality, people are not going to necessarily have giant spaces to use that. So I do think that the teleporting, uh, something like that, will be smoother and will be just done and iterated and iterated until it becomes this sort of natural, oh, it's like using my mouse to go all the way across a web page. I'm going to use this maneuver to go all the way across a virtual space. It'll just be common, like, oh yeah, duh, that's how you do it.